This is a story about dolls in a doll's house. If you remember, Totty, the farthing wooden doll, had been lent to an exhibition. But now she was home again, and everything in the house seemed perfect. Peace and goodwill to all mankind. Mm, yes, and to all doll kind too, I hope. <gasps> the cards, the cards are pretty. And listen to the singing. Listen. Totty, can such a large thing as Christmas be in a doll's house? Large? Yes, Christmas is so large. It seems to spread all over the world, sort of everywhere. But it is small too, beautifully small, perfectly small, even in a doll's house. Look how prettily Emily and Charlotte have decorated it. I like the paper chains best. See how they fly from place to place like birds. Yes. I like the little Christmas tree. If, if I sit underneath it, I'm like a Christmas present. I would like to climb up it. Be still. It was the girl's mother. She came into the playroom carrying a tiny paper parasol. Oh, said Emily at once, can we give that to Birdie for Christmas? How odd. How lovely and how odd. That is what I wish for her. Emily's mother said, and I found this marble. Would that do as a ball for apple? Odder and odder, but very exciting. I wonder what will come next. Next, they hung a buttonhole of woolen flowers on the tree for Mr Plantagenet, and then they went away. Oh, dear, that isn't very exciting. Poor Mr Plantagenet. Oh, dear, it isn't, is it? I think perhaps my Christmas is a bit spoilt. Uh, is it a bit spoilt, Dotty? No, no, of course not. But I wish I could make it a bit better. Then Emily came and picked up Mr Plantagenet and looked at him and said, You shall be the postmaster and you shall go to the office every day. And she carefully placed him in position and put his hands on the counter. A postmaster? The postmaster? Have you a telegram for me, please, Mr. Postmaster? I would like a telegram full of good news. Oh, a letter for me, please. Uh, a letter with a Christmas card written to Merry Christmas Apple on it. Just a moment, please, everybody. I am speaking on the telephone. Yes. Yes, certainly. Who are you speaking to? To the Queen, of course. Oh! Uh, certainly. Her Majesty wishes to speak to Totty. To me? Oh, my goodness. What shall I say? Here you are. Hello? Um, hello? There's nobody there. Oh, of course not. It's only a toy. <laughs> Let's just pretend. <laughs> <laughs> Darna doesn't like the other parcel. Oh, I wish what is in that parcel was just pretend. Do you know what's in it? Oh, I don't know, but Darna knows something. Oh, I wish, I wish, I wish Emily would come and put us back in the doll's house and shut the door. I wish she would do it now. That must have been a very strong wish, because Emily came straight in and said it was time to put the dolls back in their house. With the door shut, please. The girls put the Plantagenets tidily back in their house, putting Totty in the kitchen with a pudding basin to hold as if she were making Christmas pudding. But they didn't close the front of the house. Then they went to open the other parcel. Be still, Donna. Inside the other parcel was much pain. The girls recognised her at once as the doll they had seen at the exhibition. Look at her, said Emily. Isn't she beautiful? Yes, indeed. I am beautiful. Very beautiful. Look at her eyes, said Emily. See how they open and shut. Look at her clothes. Yes, my eyes are made of the finest blue glass, and my clothes take off and on. See the lace edging. Emily was reading the note that came with the doll. She is ours, she shouted. She was away at the cleaners and then at the exhibition, but really, she goes with the house. She must be our best doll.
Emily brought March Payne over to the house and put her in the kitchen. I expect you two remember each other, she said. Totty had never looked so wooden. She knew March Payne, and March Payne knew Totty. And her eyes, her best blue glass eyes, went click just once. But you don't belong in the kitchen, said Emily, and she lifted March Payne out and sat her on one of the chairs in the sitting room near Mr. Plantagenet. Then she closed the front of the house and went away. Don't do that. Don't do what? Don't stare and stare. It's very rude. I'm sorry, but I can't help it. Oh, uh, I suppose they are fixed. Fixed? What? Your eyes. They don't open and shut. Take them off me at once. Excuse me, my eyes are not on you. They are in me. <laughs> you should be in the hall, not sitting in a chair. If you sit at all, it should be in the kitchen. Oh, why shouldn't I sit? I am jointed. Look, I can wave my legs. Uh, stop that at once. You should know your place. Are you not the butler? I don't know what a butler is, but I'm not one. I am a postmaster, and I am the master of this house. I am the master, and Birdie, Mrs. Plantagenet, is the mistress. That she certainly is not. I am. You? Ahem, <coughs> oh, oh, no. How could you be? I have never seen you before. I have seen Birdie, and I know she is mistress of this house. We shall see. What is that noise? I expect that is Apple. He rolls down the stairs. He is a little boy doll, our little boy. He belongs to us. Does he? Does he indeed? And what is that other um, squeaky noise? That is Birdie upstairs. And what is she doing there, pray? Dusting the paper chains with her feather duster, and she's singing. It is a very aggravating noise. I like to hear her singing. I wish you would stop her. Oh, no. Why not? It would be cruel. It's cruel to disturb a bird on its nest. That wasn't quite what Mr Plantagenet meant to say, but it seemed to say what he meant. What rubbish. Oh, I do wish Emily and Charlotte, or whatever their names are, would come and put me in my own room. Uh, excuse me, but which is your own room? Why? The one with the pink carpet, of course. But but that is Birdie's. She chose it. It is Birdie's nest. It is mine. And if you want to know, the whole house is mine. What? But, but it's our house. We dreamed of it. We wished and wished for it. I can't help that. It is mine. And really, you know, I can't be expected to live in it with all these others bumping and singing and getting silly ideas about it belonging to them. Oh, don't say that. D don't say that. But I do say that. But you don't understand. We were on the hearth rug when the litter came and C Christmas was so beautiful. You don't know. Truly, truly, you don't know. What you don't know, and what you had better know, is that I was here first. I was here in this doll's house long, long ago. Long before any of you. Not before Totty, you weren't. Totty has been here as long as you have. <laughs> Totty, a farthing doll. A farthing, a penny, a pound. She's been here longer. Totty is Totty. I wish she was here. Totty is Totty. She is and always will be. Totty, Totty, Totty. So there. As if she had been called, Charlotte came in, opened the house, and lifted Totty into the sitting room. I don't see why you should be left all alone in the kitchen, she said. And the dolls sat there quite still. To look at them, you would never have known they were anything but the best of friends. But that's how it is with dolls. <laughs>